Well, Japanese aid strategy has changed, and uh, but particularly uh, after 2015. But um, let me first cover the background. Uh, in, traditionally, Japan has been uh, infrastructure export oriented. Uh, it's uh, Asia focused, and um, it it had two purposes. You know, one of course was to uh, promote Japan's economic recovery and development until it caught up with the West. Um, and uh, from an early stage, ever since it uh, joined the OECD in 1964, uh, Japan has also been uh, endeavoring to follow, you know, OECD norms, you know, ODA norms, and uh, demonstrate uh, its membership in the Western Alliance. Now, um, after after 1992, that was the first ODA charter. Uh, Japan really broadened its focus to include global issues, you know, human security, the environment, democracy, uh, these kinds of things. And um, a period of, uh, you know, structural reform began, particularly, you know, leading to the creation of the so-called new JICA, right, which started in 2008. But uh, more recently, uh, there's been, a, I think, uh, uh, a change of, um, a slight change of direction in, in Japanese aid strategy with the uh, 2015 Development Cooperation Charter. And uh, I think it's significant that the, the title of this document did not use ODA. Uh, they, it, uh, it uses the word development cooperation. And it's not that Japan is sort of leaving uh, ODA side, or it, Japan is not going to follow ODA norms. But I think the emphasis or, uh, or the signal uh, meant uh, to be communicated is that uh, it would be more closely tied to Japan's interests, in particular uh, the national security strategy that was articulated in 2013 is one of the guiding frameworks for Japan's development cooperation today. So this is, um, uh, this is a new development, a new aspect of uh, Japanese aid strategy, so that aid uh, not only contributes to global welfare, you know, sustainability, uh, also Japan's economic security and livelihood, uh, uh, but also to, you know, wider issues of international stability and peace. And uh, I think it, um, uh, it's an appropriate uh, development for Japan. Well, you know, compared to uh, the heyday of ODA, you know, the North-South Dialogue and the development of ODA norms in the 70s and 80s, uh, today we see um, um, uh, first of all, uh, growing sophistication in thinking about um, development, aid, poverty, these, these concepts. I think early on, um, a very sort of economics-focused approach governed uh, ODA. Later on, uh, as researchers uh, understood better the dynamics and causes of poverty and also the um, the the uh, the complexity of development, economic development, of course, is tied to so many other issues: gender equality, uh, sustainability, these kinds of things. So, this a uh, growing sophistication uh, in the discourse and in the concepts being accumulated or added to to aid <coughs> is really um, today. Uh, Broadening the whole range of of uh, of ODA conceptually and also politically, uh, because uh, what's happening also at the same time is um, the whole discussion of aid is now much more inclusive. It used to be pretty much restricted to G7 countries and the OECD, and now it includes uh, emerging donors like China. And also, uh, developing countries are becoming increasingly sophisticated, and they have 
they also, particularly as they move into middle income and upper middle income status, they have a lot of resources themselves for development and uh, uh, they're beginning to identify their own development needs much more assertively, if not needs, their desires. So um, uh, I think uh, uh, international aid today or foreign aid or ODA is um, uh, it's not so easily wrapped up in a concept uh, such as ODA. Uh, if you look at the Sustainable Development Goals, which includes, what, 17 goals with so many related values to be included and so many different methods and so many different stakeholders included, it's difficult for any one country or any one organization that wants to participate in aid to cover everything. So I think another interesting aspect of aid today is that donors, whether they're public or private, uh, have to be more selective in what they choose to do within the SDG framework. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I would say just it's, it's more complicated and also more, it's, it's a more contested uh, terrain today.